Anyhow, so the Lakers beat the Jazz to wrap up uh, their uh, regular season sitting in seventh, just outside the guaranteed top six. But it doesn't matter because since the All-Star break, they've had the second best record in basketball. And the job that Rob Palenka did in putting that team together is finally paying off dividends. So what happens next? Well, Tuesday, tomorrow night, they play the Minnesota Timberwolves. I don't think there's anybody alive that thinks the T-Wolves are going to beat the Lakers in that game. Now, Minnesota would wait to play the winner of the 9-10 game, so their season doesn't end. But from a Lakers standpoint, it locks them in at two. Being at two means you play the Memphis Grizzlies, okay? I got to ask the question because Mm -hmm. there's a lot of people going to ask the question. Who would you rather play? Let's just say you became a wizard and you could pick your first-round matchup. And you're the Lakers. Would you rather play the Nuggets or would you rather play the Grizzlies? I would rather play the Denver Nuggets. As would I. Because I think Memphis athletically poses defensive matchup problems for the Lakers. That being said, the Lakers are not going to play around here because it's a one-and-done situation. Neither the Pelicans nor who the uh, Oklahoma City Thunder mm-hmm. are good enough to beat the Lakers. Mm-hmm. But I think you go out there, you beat Minnesota. And then here's what the thing I, I, that, that, that you know, uh, I struggle with. Hard for me to get out there, right? Well, that was a quit, tough one. Quit, 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 quit. I was a tough one. Well, Easter eggs and all that. Uh, here's what I struggle with, okay? And that is this. If you think you're a championship caliber team, does it really matter who you play? No. no. Right? You go out there going, seven-game series, we're a better team. We're going to win. Yeah, they may get a game or two along the way, but we're going to win. I've never seen a championship team in basketball say publicly, oh, we don't want any part of that team. Oh, that team poses matchup problems for us. And the Lakers are playing great team basketball right now. AD looks like he wants to play basketball. LeBron, crazy good shape. And his feet look like they're fine. Had a great game against yesterday, against Utah, right? Mm -hmm. So as I'm thinking about it, I'm saying to myself, yeah, I think the Nuggets are a better matchup athletically for them than uh, the Grizzlies are. But does it really matter? If I think I can win a championship, at some point, I got to play really good teams and beat them. Yeah, absolutely. It doesn't matter about the youth, the athletic ability of the Memphis Grizzlies or the size of Jokic, the ability for him to pass and implement other guys and get them involved. You feel like you have two of the best players in basketball in a supporting cast that supports those best players that you those two best players. Right. Better than you've ever had. And this is an opportunity for you to get your second championship with those two guys. I know you love that bubble championship. It doesn't count. This is, it right. definitely counts. <laughs> this is your chance to solidify that this trade that you made to go acquire Anthony Davis, it made sense. And now you have pieces that support that and can support that. You don't care who you play. Put five guys on the court. And we're going to play me, And we're going to play them and we're so. going to beat them. Yeah, so that, that's the Lakers side. Again, the other teams I have no interest in because they can't do anything. No disrespect, but disrespect to New Orleans and Oklahoma City. Yep, plenty. I mean, they're just like, why? why, why I'm not going to waste the audience's time talking about them. They cannot win the first round. I don't care who the eighth seed is. Even Minnesota. I love Anthony Edwards' game. Love it, love it, love it. And uh, Towns is back. Mm-hmm. Love it, love it, love it. They're one and done. Like, they're not winning the first round against the Denver Nuggets or the Memphis Grizzlies. But I'll tell you a team. I'll tell you a team. And I'm not sure how often this has happened in the annals of the NBA. I don't For think a six word. seed to be favored in a series against a three seed, does that happen often, if ever? And the Golden State Warriors, who took three out of four this they year did. from the Sacramento Kings, and oh, Good. by the way, went eight and two in their last 10 games of the regular season, got the matchup they were dying for. Uh, they lost the tiebreaker to the Clippers. So they have the same exact record. Clippers won the tiebreaker. They get the Suns. Bye bye, Clippers. <laughs> <laughs> and Golden State charmed they get the Sacramento Kings. Yeah, this is, again, this sixth spot was important. Especially when you look at the Golden State Warriors and 
what their record is against this Sacramento Kings. I think believe they're one of maybe two teams all year that got three wins against this team, this Sacramento Kings team, who's played tremendous amount of basketball. But again, they're young, they're inexperienced in the postseason. This is what you want if you're a playoff pedigree team, a championship pedigree team in the Golden State Warriors to play a team that's inexperienced. Yes, they are. They have had a tremendous season. Mm-hmm. Yes. The Sacramento Kings have. Uh, I think uh, Mike Brown has done a tremendous job, head coach, maybe coach of the year. Uh, but this is the postseason. You have experience versus not no experience whatsoever, and that tends to play in a huge value inside of the Lake or the Golden State. I mean, Warriors, Golden so. State significant favorites, and they should be, mm-hmm. even though they're a six seed. And remember something else. The NBA does not reseed in the playoffs like the NFL does, right? Mm. So if Golden State beats Sacramento and the Lakers beat the Grizzlies, guess what you have in the next round of the playoffs? What do we have? A great matchup. What do we have? Woo! Let's go. Golden State, LA? What are we talking That's about? What we want. Talking about I'm not getting much sleep is what we're talking <laughs> about. But, you know, it's, it's funny because – you know, the Clippers were in the tiebreaker, so they wind up getting the five seed, right? The Suns have not lost the game uh, when they were trying with uh, Kevin Durant in the lineup. And now the poor little wounded Clippers come in. Oh, oh, oh. They get swept by the Phoenix Suns. Probably. That is a wrap. I think so. A sweet. <laughs> yeah. So you're looking at the uh, – This I tell you, this plays out so perfectly for the Lakers and Golden State that you could get to a Western Conference Finals and not have to play the Nuggets or the Suns until you get there, right? Yeah. So from that standpoint, you have the Suns now sitting there going, we haven't lost a single game that Kevin Durant has played for us, right? And we cruised into the fourth spot. You know, the last couple games didn't matter. Take care of business. No Paul George for the Clippers most likely throughout this series. I mean, I can't see the Clippers winning a game. I really can't. It's going to be dead ugly. Yeah, I, it's going to be hard to sweep this Clippers team just because they play with a lot of heart. They're um, tough. They're, yeah, they're tough. And it, it, if the key, in my opinion, is going to be Westbrook. What are you going to get out of Westbrook? If, we get the, if they get the Westbrook that played the way that he played with no Kawhi and no Paul George yeah. a, a week or so ago, they, can, they have a chance to – to sneak out a couple games. I don't believe they win this series, but I'm not going to just count them out and say they're going to get split. Now, I know they split the season series 2-2, but the Suns are just a different team, man. And uh, the Clippers without Paul George. He hasn't played since, what, March uh, 21st. To their credit, they held court, man. I mean, like, they could have gone... They've held, the play and they held court. They've held all season yes. long without Kawhi, without Paul George, without the combination of the two being on the court consistently together. So this is why I don't just count them out of not winning a game yeah. or two. They can get that. Well, you have to remember one other thing. We don't talk about defense a lot because uh, we all love offense, right? We all love 130 to 127 type games. But the reality is that the Phoenix Suns somehow like have snuck up on people. They have the best defense in the West as far as points per game allowed. So not only do they have an unstoppable scorer now in Kevin Durant and one of the great young wing players in Devin Booker and a monster down low in Aiton and, oh, by the way, a first bout Hall of Fame point guard in CP3. Mm -hmm. What's up? They also play great defense. Why do you always uh, do that? What's up? That's why I stand. What's up? It's the movie you used to play on Shlomo Sugarman <laughs> over at the up? JCC. What's up? Yeah, the yeah. only person he was able to ever say it to. Listen, what's up? That's uh, that's the new segment on the show. <laughs> yeah, it's called Carton Show. What's up? What's anyway, up? Anyway, in the, the East, handles. Uh, I have to tell you this in the East. Um, I love basketball. I love Eastern Conference basketball. I'm a New York kid. Uh, the Milwaukee Bucks win their first round in the sweep. I don't care who they play. The Boston Celtics, I don't care who they play, sweep the first round. Yep. Sixers take out the Nets. Maybe a sweep, worst case in five. The only series at all that we will pay attention to yes. in the first round is the one right there towards the middle of your screen. Mm-hmm. Cavs and Knicks. Cavs and Knicks. Mm-hmm. The only team capable of an upset in the first round of the Eastern Conference playoffs are my beloved New York Knicks. Now, the big rub for them, does Julius Randle come back or not? 
He's out of the walking boot, hurt his ankle a couple it. weeks ago. And I hate Julius Randle, but I need Julius Randle <laughs> for the Knicks to win this series. How heartbreaking for you. I can't stand it. First off, he wears Bernard King's number. That's stupid to me. Secondly, he's a whiner and a ball hog at times. Mm -hmm. Thirdly, he had a great year. He did. And the New York Knicks won almost 50 games because Julius Randle not only had a great year, Julius Randle did something that no other star in the league did. My man played 77 games this year. And the only games he missed were for a legitimate ankle injury. He comes to play every single night. That. And as much that. as I can't stand him, I respect the fact that he takes playing seriously. You, you, you don't... You, Let you me be clear. I hate the man. No, you do not. <gasps> yes, I do. Why? No, yes, I do. That's a strong Yes, word. I do. No, you do Yes, don't. I do. Why? Huh? Why? Because like, he what? gave me the thumbs down as a He's fan a couple years ago. Oh my off God! So, you're so sick. Get over it. You are such a little baby. You don't come into like my. Me. You don't come into my building uh -huh. and give me the thumbs down wearing my uniform. What if Billy Joel went on stage and did this to you? Would you? I don't get that comparison at all. But I'd never see him in concert again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're yeah, such a, you're uh, such I got a, a finger baby. for you. All he, all he gave you was a thumb down, and that's well, what it took. Yes, that's what it was. Sorry, should have traded him then. He's not a New Yorker. That being said, no I need him. No one on I the team him. is a New Yorker. I need him. What's this? What's this? Two thumbs down. Thumb down I got for you. Thumb. Quadruple. Yes. Boo. Okay. okay. Yeah. I know who my friends are. <laughs> I know who my friends are. Do you hate you, us now? No, uh, you know I love you. I am. I, yeah, I love you, Greg. You know I love I you. I appreciate it. I check in with you all the time. You make do. sure you're okay. You do. I, I, I appreciate do. that. There I you love go. you too, man. Yes, you do. Obviously, I love you. Oh, buddy. thanks, Greg. Yeah, still here. <laughs> he said it. He said it on TV. <laughs> <laughs> wait, my, wait for Dad to say it to me forever. <laughs> Can't believe he's still here. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, and the best player that doesn't get a lot of attention still because he plays in the armpit of Ohio and it's not Cincinnati. They don't have a basketball team. It's uh, Donovan Mitchell. And the great part of this, you know, Nick Cavs series is Donovan Mitchell has bags packed. He wanted to be a Nick. His father works for the New York Mets. He grew up in the uh, New York area for a good portion of his life. And he's always wanted to be a Nick. Thought he was going to be a Nick. Should have been a Nick. The Knicks were unwilling to get rid of R.J. Barrett in that deal. And he had a tough season for the majority of it. And now we have a guy that wanted to play for us, playing against us. And I'll be very clear. Love Jalen Brunson. Love him. Love Quigley, the sixth man of the year in my estimation. And Julius Reynolds had a great year. The best player on the court in this series is Donovan Mitchell. Yes. Doesn't mean you're going to win, but that is the best player on this court. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. And I mean, it, could you imagine if the Knicks would have had Donovan Mitchell? Yes, I can imagine. <laughs> and the fact that they yes. held on to R.J. Yeah, like, that's right. By the way, R.J. Barrett's only 22 years old. I get that. We are committed to him long term now, so don't sleep on R.J. Barrett. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm, yeah. like, I'm, I'm snoring on R.J. Barrett right now. Hey there. Thank you so much for watching The Carton Show. You can subscribe right here to get all the latest bits and segments from the show. And by the way, while you're at it, we have a lot of great shows on FS1, so check that out too.